Good afternoon, everybody. YouTube, Facebook, everybody. This is Minister Sellers from Wilson, North Carolina. I got an awesome message. It must be great because I keep being interrupted. But this message is called, It's Time to Go for Yourself. I'm coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and starting at verse 24. Can you read with me, please? Know ye not that they which run in a race run all. But one receiveth the prize, so one that ye may obtain. And every man that strives for the mystery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain to corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainty, so fight. I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bringeth it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a castaway. I'm talking about getting our souls ready for Christ. But before I say any more about that, the name of my message is, It's Time to Go for Yourself. Lord, please stay me behind that pulpit and let the Holy Spirit lead me. Now, this is what Paul is saying. Paul said, Forgetting those things which are behind which are behind you. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in God and Jesus Christ. In other words, we all have to come to a place in our lives where we'll say yesterday is God and tomorrow, tomorrow is not promised. Now the Bible says, Know ye not that, that they which run in a race run all. Well, we are in a race. Every day we are getting closer to our finish line. I don't know when God is going to say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have finished your course. You ran the race. All I do know is that I'm in a race. I'm in a race for my life. I decided that many years ago when I became a Christian, that I'm staying one until the end. My life belongs to Jesus Christ. Now, I am not perfect, and you ain't either, but I know who, who died for me, who died on that cross on Calvary. I know for God that I live, and for God, I'm going to die. All I know is that I will not turn back. I made a lot of mistakes. You made a lot of mistakes. We all made mistakes. That's where we get stronger in Christ at, but I'm going to keep running this race. I'm going to run this race until God called me in. Now, we are blessed because there are so many countries in this world today who are not able to worship like we are, worship in the opening. But the race we are running is like a marathon. It's not one time or two times around the finish line, but it's a marathon. We will finish when God comes down to this earth to get us. Now, Paul knew that racing was prominent in the Korean, so he used this example to get through to them that they can understand. Life is very much like a race. Christianity is a race that is run on a narrow path. Our path is lit up by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we all know that there is a prize at the end of this race and it's our eternal life. That's, that's the race we are willing for. Now my subject is, it's time to go for yourself. Well, it's time to stop varying about everybody and concentrating on yourself. You know what you, you are worrying about. You you worry about your children, you worry about your job, you worry about this and that. You doing things for everybody. You uh, are moving constantly from the time you wake up that morning until the time you go to bed. But your business, your money, your family, all that stuff, that's gonna still be here when you are gone. When you are gone, to be with the Lord, that's going to still be here. So we need to focus on ourselves. Now, uh, in this letter, I'm, I'm letting you know that we need to stop lacking ourselves. Because it's all so hard as it is, draining our energy. When you wake up in the morning, you got to go from A to B. Instead of thinking about yourself for once. In a sense, you hurting yourself. Now you need to stop, look, and listen, and check out your own self. We can only give so much. 
and we can only focus so far because we are in the last days believe it or not it's getting close we need to think about about something the bible said the love of of many shall rats cold well that's good look at all this stuff that's going on the pandemic is keeping us out of church it's uh making it so we have to do a lot of social uh socializing through uh, social media which is good that's a great thing but what i'm saying the devil got power also the the the, the power that we give him this can work in the devil's advantage so during this pandemic most of the churches is closed down Richard, I'm not saying nothing, nothing different. I'm just saying it's closed down. So during this time, while it's closed down, why not wear our masks so that we can help open things back up? But the longer this pandemic is out here, the longer we in church, the the harder it's gonna be for for people to get back in church. They going it's gonna turn to be normal. They gonna get so used to laying around, being in their own clothes, not getting dressed not going to church that when time come for them to go they ain't gonna want to go and see that's what i meant when i said this pandemic works to the devil favor too so we got to pray for our leaders pray for our pastors and apostles and all of that to keep them strong so they can keep feeding us the word even if they got defeated over the media even if they got defeated knocking at your door preaching to you from from the street let give them the strength to do whatever god tells them to do Getting back to my message, which I've already done said some of it. The pandemic is the greatest weapon that the devil got. Why? Because that is the time that he can put all kinds of thoughts and ideals into our mind. That's how he get into us, through our thoughts and everything. And if we don't let him in that thought, he won't get in there. But that is where he get it. That's, that's where he get it from. That's why we need to stay strong. That's why we need to focus on God. That's why we need to stay in the Word. That's why we need to do whatever we have to do to fight this good back, uh, battle of faith. God said He would never leave us nor forsake us. I will be with you even until the end of the world. That's God. Now see, if we put God first, He gonna make that way. He gonna make things possible. He gonna open the doors that cannot be opened by anyone else and he's going to close the doors that will, will not be able to be closed by anyone. He's going to be right there watching over you. God is our way maker. So we need to stop worrying and cast out our cares on him. What we need to do is think about self. We need to think about self. And this next verse says, And every man that strife for the mystery is temporary in all things. Now they do it to, to obtain a corruptible crown. Now what that is saying, Christians must live a disciplined life. They must not allow themselves to get involved in these worthy things. And you know, it's a lot of temptation out there. Temperate meaning self-control is crucial to our victory. Corruptible crown here is referring to those who won the race. But see, we are in the winning circle because we won in the race of eternity. Now I know what Paul is saying. But we were in the right race forever. Now verse 27, 26, Paul is saying, You don't run just to be running, but to finish that race. He is not preaching to hear himself speak or preach, but to get results from everybody else. Verse 27 says, Paul is saying that the practice, that he practiced what he preached, as we shall do also. We should not only preach the gospel, but we should live we should live what we preach. We should live by the words that come out of our mouth. So the words that we preach, that's what everybody should be looking at. The way we walk is the way we is the way we walking is what the talk we should be talking. That's what the people should be seeing. They shouldn't be seeing nothing no different. When we get out there and speak God's word and minister to God's people, the words we speaking out of God's word supposed to be our character. Supposed to be our character. You know like a child is born. That child got the characteristics of his father or his mother. But that's the characteristic we should have of Jesus Christ. We should have his character. But getting back to my message, that was all of my message. What I'm saying is you focus on this race. We are running a great and wonderful race. 
but we need to spend some of that time for ourselves and, and uh, not to be too busy, not to uh, not let everything overpower us where we're forgetting God's word. See, that's how the enemy get in there. He gets in there by putting everything else on our mind. We talking about our businesses. We worrying about how we going to make it. Talking about our children. Worrying about how they going to school. Worrying about our health because we can't get in those uh, rooms anymore to exercise the, the gyms and everything. We worrying about how we going to eat because we don't got no money coming in because they're not letting the government supply us with those uh, stimulus checks anymore. I mean, we got so many things on our mind. Well, uh, we need to clear our mind. And let God lead us. We need to let God direct us. And we need to wear our masks. We need to wear our masks everywhere. You know what? That's the solution to this stuff that's going on. Part of the solution. If we wear our masks and kept that person safe. And that person kept us safe. Y'all, we would be going somewhere. We would be out of this mess before you know it. But see, we are in the peak of things. We are in the peak of things. This stuff is serious. People are not taking this for real. So many people are dying and they are killing, being killed out there. I've never seen so many people in all the whole world lose their lives so fast. And a lot of these preachers talking about, oh, it's just pneumonia, pneumonia in my eyeball or, or the flu in my eyeball. You better wake up and smell the coffee. This pandemic is serious and it don't got no name on it. It's taking babies. Young people, older people, people like me, it's taking all our lives. We better wake up and smell the coffee. And you know what else? If we can hurry up and get to November, to voting time, and, and, and get that right house straight out, get the president out, and put somebody else in, we will be doing great. We will be doing great then. We got to focus on, on our surroundings. We got to focus on keeping our minds straight. Don't let this succumb our thoughts and our minds. Keep our minds on God. Keep our minds on high. Keep our minds and trust completely in God. And let Him lead our battles. Cast all your cares on Him. He will not leave you, nor will He ever forsake you. He will be with you until the end. We can rely on that and we can't rely on nobody else. But I hope this word be a meaning in somebody's life. Now, I know sometimes when we are trying to read scriptures, and we are trying to read a message. We sort of stray off. But I stray wherever the Holy Spirit lead me, y'all. This world never been like this before. Never have I ever seen this like this before. And y'all, we need to come together. Because together we stand. Divided, we going to fall. Bloop. We fall right on down. So we got to stand together, y'all. Stand on God's foundation. And let God lead us. Order our step and guide our way. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. You pray for me. You have a great day. Don't forget to call somebody. Tell them you love them. Don't forget to show some love. Keep your distances and keep your mask on. To God be the glory. And y'all, God bring us through all of this. Put it in His hands. That's the hands it's supposed to be in. And make and let Him do a work in your life. To God be the glory. This is Minister Settles out. I will talk to you later. Thank you.